Hi, and welcome to the What's Cooking Show. I'm your host today, Joey Quibodeau with Piggly Wiggly here in Opelousas. And I'm Chef Jason Hugay from the Steamboat Warehouse in Washington, Louisiana. We have two very special guests today, Jordy and Vincent from the Jean Lafitte National Park here in uh, Eunice, Louisiana. Uh, Jordy, give us a brief explanation of what we're going to be making today, man. Today is going to be some corn mock shoe. Hmm, it sounds really good because everybody got different ways of cooking corn mock shoe. So Jordy's back from more What's Cooking and Jordy's going to start his uh, recipe for us. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Um, we're here with Jordy and Vincent, and we're going to start our dish um, right now. So, uh, Jordy, how do we begin our um, corn mock shoot today? You start with some oil. Kind of all we got, man. Just some olive vegetables. oil. It's just some oh, o okay. olive oil. Of course, you want to have it about medium heat. And here we're going to start with some tasso. Uh, slice this up. Some pretty tasso. Mm. While uh, George is doing that, Vince, why don't you tell us a little bit about the National Park? Well, uh, we're there in Eunice. It's, uh, actually, it's called Jean Lafitte National Historical Park and Preserve. Uh, we're at the Prairie Acadian Cultural Center in Eunice, next door to the Liberty Theater on Park Avenue. Mm -hmm. And uh, there, we during the day, we have videos to watch on the history of the Acadians. We have a museum that uh, goes through, the, you know, goes uh, about the expel expulsion, the migration. It's broken into segments, the family and music and so forth. Then we have a crafts room. And then we have our kitchen where every Saturday afternoon at 4 o'clock, we got Jordy there preparing different Cajun dishes. And at 3 o'clock before the food, we have a live music program. Wow, so you got something exciting all happening all, all the time. Oh yeah, all day long. So what time does the park open at that day? Uh, we open from 9.30 uh, until 4.30 during the week and 9.30 until 6 on Saturday. And so you come visit us at 3 o'clock with the music, 4 o'clock cooking, then 6 o'clock next door at the Liberty Theater for the live Rendezvous de Cajun uh, show that's broadcast right here. Right, good. Every Saturday, right? Every Saturday, 6 o'clock. So, Jordy, you do all the cooking on, on, on Saturdays over there? That's correct. I've been doing it since June. It's every Saturday at 4, yes, sir. And you just pick a different dish every week? Yes, sir. That's correct. Oh, okay. And he plays music with us. <laughs> oh, very A cooking talented. musician. <laughs> give, give us some examples of what kind of dishes you make. Well, I do like the... in the past. Sure. Uh, well, I start off with jambalaya, sauce pecan, those things like that. Um, I eventually did some gumbo. Uh, I did something a little different, almost like a fusion dish, uh, Cajun spaghetti. Um, in the future, I want to do some stew. It's just, it's always something different. Yeah. Just yeah. good stuff. Yeah, very good stuff. Speaking about good stuff, like especially like George's cooking here today, can be found at your local Piggly Wiggly stores here in Opelousas. <laughs> the two locations to serve you. 8410 Highway 182 North, or 1305 Heather Drive, and or Highway 1 in Simsport. And we still don't know the numbers yet. 17 something. <laughs> you said it one day. 17 something. I don't 17 know. 17 exactly something. something. Simsport. Or you can find a copy of this recipe on our website at kdcg.com and click on the What's Cooking Show. It's not fun uh, anymore. You say it right every time. No, I know. I, can't, I don't stumble no more. It's just not Those are good no old days. <laughs> Kitty, did, did, did. Uh -huh. <laughs> By the way, I'll mess it up. By the way, Jordy's got a blog site with all of his recipes that he puts on there called what you, Gourmet by Jordy. Gourmet Go by ahead. Jordy. Yeah, I like that nice. name. Yeah. <laughs> Straight to the point. Yeah. He's so good, I don't call him a cook, I call him a chef. Ah. Hey, you don't have to go to culinary school to be a chef. That's true. That's right. You don't. Just some, you know, when I started three or four years ago, you know, I just started cooking for friends and family, and I just, I just pretty much fell in love with it. You know, it's just, I love, I love to do it. I think, yeah. I think most people around this area love to cook. Not, not all of them, but, you know, true. Just a, this is just a culture down here. Mm -hmm. We just love cooking. Just like I was telling you about the book we have, Cajun Men Cook. Which is people from up north come down should've here. Should have brought and they one find of those today. Unusual. Yeah, I should have brought should've the brought book. Yeah. Well, why is, uh, I'm sure these cookbooks are for sale. Uh, oh, what, yeah. where, where can they be find these cookbooks? At our center there, in in the lobby, we have a bookstore. We've got all of the classics like uh, Who's Your Mama? You know, are you Catholic? Can you make <laughs> yeah. a room? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of those real classic cookbooks wow. are there. I think it's Who's Your Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> 
Get me wrong. So they can find all the cookbooks and stuff there. Cookbooks, oh. CDs, uh, historical books too. That's really, really good that you won't find anywhere. We got stuff that even Barnes and Noble doesn't have. Wow, <laughs> specialty stuff. So. Real good. That's very, very nice. It smells Your, good. I'm telling you, it's got to smell good in here. And just, this is, you know, the, the idea of, of browning and braising the ingredients is very common in Cajun cuisine. Pretty much every dish we do, except for maybe like gumbo fricasse, involves sauteing it, of, yeah. smothering it. Right. It's very, very common. Well, Jordan, next next year you're going to have to try to come and, uh, and join the soiree for it. We us. need to come. Yeah, yeah. That would, yeah, that would be all right. <laughs> Speaking about soirees. <laughs> yeah, tell we us got about it. We got to congratulate our own Jason. You gave yeah, I heard that. Yeah. Came first in seafood, second in gumbo. I'm sorry, second in soup. Best overall and people's choice. Yeah, it was um, very overwhelming. Um, I, I, I will never top last night's winnings in one night. It, it was fantastic. It was amazing. I'm still kind of in shock. And I, I still can't keep up with all the text messages and Facebook messages. And all that. <laughs> no, who, who handed out the awards? Oh, actually, um, yeah, we were talking about it earlier. It was really a, a, a sweet moment, special to me, not just because of the awards that we won, but um, Chef Paul Miller, who was uh, a guy who I did an apprentice under at K. Paul's in uh, New Orleans. He was a celebrity chef, handing out the awards, and it was kind of a... Um, Quite an honor. Special yeah, moment, yeah. yeah. I hadn't seen him in years, you know, and you know, we, we keep in touch, you know, we, we talk to each other, you know, you know, as, as often as we can. But uh, to have him there uh, and some other family members that have never had the opportunity to see what we do, mm -hmm. they were in attendance and um, some other good friends that were there. So it was, everyone was there that I wanted to be there, you know, and, and, and it was just special. Did, did a proud moment, yeah. Did, did yeah, he I, say congratulations, little grasshopper? He did. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, actually the, the last one that he, you know, they called me up for, uh, he actually pulled me in close and asked me, man, is this thing rigged or what? <laughs> said, no. uh, don't say that. Definitely no. not. <laughs> but we also had some other winners. Explain who. That's who. right. My wife won second place in her dessert category. And, uh, very the proud same of her dish team. that she took, top dog honors at the OC Tasters. OC Tasters, yeah. She what was, was best overall. It was a bread it's pudding. It's amazing. It's a pecan praline bread pudding that she Oh, had. man. With the caramel It's sauce. amazing. Oh. Really oh. well, we're going to take a short break, and we're going to come back with more What's Cooking in just a few minutes. Welcome back to the What's Cooking Show. Again, we have Jordy and Vince with us here today, and uh, Jordy's cooking us his version of a corn mock shoe. So we're going to go ahead and go back to Jordy and let him continue where he's at. All right, now we're going to throw in the tomato. It smells good. Yeah, it smoky does. Tasso. Mm -hmm. See, at this point, it's starting to, it really starting to, you know, cook down really well. So that's, you know, one, and pretty much once you see that, that's when it's time to throw in the other ingredients. Okay. It's good to have tomato and corn mock shoe. Yeah. It's a very good match. <clears throat> I think the original corn mock shoe uh, recipe had um, cabbage, I believe, in it. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Really? If I'm not mistaken, I read somewhere and I wanted to hit the, the as a cookbook that had a um, history in it and it said the original corn mock shoe, something about the name is uh, cabbage in French or something? Um, I don't know. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Shoe, yeah. Shoe is cabbage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I never thought about that. Maybe it's one of the cookbooks you got over there, Vince. Yeah. Next time I'll be I'm sure it is. Let me get that little stem out of there. Thanks. A little leaf. <laughs> <coughs> Stir this around well. It's coming together, man. I like that pot you got there too, buddy. Appreciate that. Can't go wrong. Pretty Not much every, that. pretty much every Cajun household has a, you know, some sort of black pot. Whether you know, you know, pretty much whether it's huge or it's small. I mean, there's some kind of a black pot in that house. You know. My mom gave me a call a few days ago. Said that someone she works with was ready to buy some pots for their home. And he said, I wanted to ask you if you could ask your son, because I want whatever kind of pots a chef would have in his home. And so my mom said, I'm so I'm asking you, what pots do you use? I said, basically, I use magnet lights mm -hmm. and cast iron, and mm -hmm. that's it. Mm -hmm. And a rice pot. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, rice cooker. <laughs> yeah, other than that, I really don't use any other pot and pan. I mean, you know, I just don't, I don't use the, Cheaper versions at Walmart of different skills. Right, I don't yeah. use it. I use cast iron, 
And I use uh, Magnolite. Magnolite, Magnolite to me, is one of the best plots you can buy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> now, you know, the one I have is not a true Magnolite, but it's the it's the off-brand. I mean, Generic. Yeah, because I mean, it, Mag Magnolware. I think they, yeah, I think they quit making Magnolite. Actually, no, they, they had they to quit making it one time, but yeah. you can find that at Sam's now. Really? Mm -hmm. Next time you go, you got it. Give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> I will do that. Well, Jordan, where are we at? We ready to add our corn yet? Yes, sir. It's time for the corn. Okay. And mm. this is fresh corn, by the way. It, you can tell. Fresh off the off the hoof. And now you, you, I don't know. Like I guess you can say you pretty much everything, to, you know, pretty much sizzle now. Mm -hmm. This is the whole point. You want to all get in there and stir fry and, and smother well. Kind of come together. So get it all meshed up together. It's beautiful. All I need is a spoon. Well, Mr. Vince, how long have you been with the, uh, the National Park System? Uh, 28 years now. Wow. Now, the center there in Eunice has been open since October of 91. Mm -hmm. And our focus is on the prairie Cajuns. Then our site down in Thibodeau is on the wetlands of what we call the Bayou Cajuns. Mm -hmm. You know, again, different food down there, too. You know, a lot of seafood. Now, where, center, where did you work at? Which one did you work at before? 28 years right there in Eunice. Oh, really? So you've been in Eunice all the time? That's right. That's right. Good deal. Uh, I was there before the center opened all right. in order to gather the, the, all the artifacts they needed to create the museum collection. Yeah. I'm sure and it takes some good, a good bit of time to, to prepare before you open something like oh, that. Oh, yeah. It took about five years just I'm to sure. get it all ready and designed and, and so forth. And a lot of input from a lot of different people, like the locals, like Dewey Balfour and Barry Ancelet, then the Lower Mississippi Delta uh, Committee. Then the Smithsonian was involved really? in the design of this thing. Wow. And originally our kitchen was about the size of this. Come and on. we said, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. We just got to be much bigger. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and sure enough, it is. It's much bigger. And we have the mirror right over the stove so you can see what's going on in the pot. It's fully equipped with, you know, oven and refrigerator and so forth. Oh, wow, that's nice. We're going to have to check that out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Got to get out. you to come one Saturday afternoon and cook for us. Yeah, hey, why not? Yeah, yeah. 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 Good We'd idea, love Jason. that. And you can promote uh, your restaurant. Yeah. And you can come and promote Piggly Wiggly with you. He well, also works at Don's on, uh, in Lafayette. Don's Seafood and Steakhouse. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. The, been, the original Don's. The original. The right. The original. That, that started in Lafayette, right? That's correct. Mm -hmm. In 1934. That's because I lived in New Orleans, Orleans, and we'd go to the Don's over uh -huh. there in, in Metairie. Metairie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, great food there. Yeah, I've been there a long time. And then, well, getting back to our center, the one in Lafayette. It's right there by Vermilionville. And it gives an overview of all of Acadiana, the 22 parishes. Wow. It covers both the prairie and the Bayou Cajuns. Mm -hmm. that corn smelling good? Oh, man. Yeah, it smells good. I know good I said that already, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to keep saying it. Mm. Then our other sites in, in New Orleans, there's three. There's the French Quarter unit. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, they, you know, their focus is the French Quarter. And then there's Barataria, which is the actual preserve. It's 20,000 acres of wetlands where you can walk through the, the swamp and never get your feet wet. Wow. It's all boardwalks through there. And then Sweet. Chalmette, That's where pretty. the Battle of New Orleans took place. Uh, you know, the cemetery and the battlefield is still there. So th that's lots the and lots six. of history. Lots, lots of history. history. Then there's Jazz National Park in New Orleans. That's not part of us. And then up in Natchitoches is the mm -hmm. Cane River Creole National Park. So there's actually six, seven, eight national park sites in Louisiana. Wow. I believe I've been to the French Quarter one. Is that the one that's, is it located in the French Quarter? Yeah, 419 yes. Decatur. Decatur. I went to it, yes, I went to it. It's awesome. Yeah. Really, really it's nice. nice. I went with a girlfriend years ago and she was doing some type of project for, uh, for college. Mm -hmm. And um, it was very interesting what I saw. I mean, I went to just tag along mm -hmm. and I found myself really, you know, dialing Check in. Checking stuff out real close, yeah. huh? Really, yes, really sir. nice. That smelled really good. We're going to go ahead and take another short break, and we're going to come back for more what's cooking, and Jordy's going to finish up his recipe and for eat. us. And, and we'll, eat. <laughs> and eat. Let's yeah. eat. <laughs> and we'll talk a little bit more about the National Park. So join us back in just a few minutes. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, we're here again with uh, Jordy and Vincent from the John Lafitte's Historic National, National Park. Historical Park National and Historic. Preserve. And Preserve. <laughs> but uh, we are finishing up uh, our dish pretty soon. 
Um, Jordy, how we stand on our dish? Well, it's looking good. It's, it's all cooked down well. It's, it's looking pretty. So now it's time for some butter and some seasoning. It's looking real pretty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you know, when it comes to butter, as much as you want. That's up to you. <laughs> if you want to completely saturate it, that's up to you. I think that's the going thing in Cajun country. Yeah, you know, true. Pretty much. You know, where, yeah. Where'd you buy your butter and your seasoning? <laughs> Bigly Wiggly. <laughs> Atta boy. That's right. All the, all the fresh <laughs> ingredients that Jordan's doing today can be found at your local Bigly Wiggly stores in Annapolis. 8410 Highway 182 North. Oh, or man, that's kind of messed up. You stole my glory. <laughs> I'm going to give you half of it. <laughs> 1305 Heather Drive. Or? Or 17-0-something. <laughs> Highway 1 I in think Simsport. it's 40 something I'm not let's sure. Say, let's say that for now. Okay. Okay. You know, I said that last show, I said I was going to Google it and find the address, and I didn't. I forget as soon as I walk out the door. All I got to do is pick up the phone and call. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> you have no more excuse than me. That's right. You're right. <laughs> I should know that right off the bat, but just, I never really, you know, it's just, you, computers nowadays, you just yeah. mail them a check and it just goes to them. It's too easy. Yeah. I don't even know the address. It's just got hold of the computer and saved, and you know how QuickBook, QuickBooks operates. <laughs> Matter of fact, I went to the Piggly Wiggly just the other day. Bought a bunch of meats, stuff like that. I always go for the meats. Yep. So I did see you there. Good selections. Yeah. Yeah, we have the, the good certified Angus beef meat. CAB, ground it. beef. Can't find that just anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, some places have it, but not many. But uh, I get it. Um, I'm on a special diet lately. So I just take some CAB, ground beef. Cook it down, add some kind of vegetables to it or something, and eat that. Mm -hmm. Kind of stay away from the carbs. Yeah, it looked like you need to diet. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Right. Well, Vince, tell us again about all the, the nice things that are going on at the parks. Um, well, again, getting back to Saturday afternoons at 3, we, we have uh, not only our musicians, but we have our volunteer dancers because we have people from out of this area want to come in and they don't know how to dance, so our volunteers get them up on the floor. You mean like two-stepping? Two-stepping, waltzing, yeah, traditional, yes. you know, traditional dan yeah. Cajun dancing. Uh, so they spend the, the afternoon with us there, and then the video we have is called Echoes of Acadie, and it's about the explosion of the, uh, the Acadians up in what is now Nova Scotia, and how eventually, uh, how the word Cajun came about from Acadian, which in French is Acadien, Acadien. And they, when they got here, the English would say, what are you? And they'd say, I cut you. I, oh, you're a Cajun. Yeah. So that's how we got the, the, the word Cajun. And in the video, again, it, the deportation and, and how the exiles were sent to the, the colonies, uh, you know, the British colonies. Some went back to France on welfare, what we, they called the dole. Some went back to England as prisoners of war. And when the British kicked them out, they made sure they threw them to the four winds and you will never, never, ever get back together. Well, the British were wrong, <laughs> as usual. <laughs> Underestimate. <laughs> and uh, so some of them went down even as far as the Falkland Islands. Wow. I mean, it was a huge, and then uh, that was in 1850, uh, 1755. And then in 1765, that's when the Acadians started arriving here in the Atakapal territory. Mm -hmm. And others around the world that were scattered out heard about it. This is French. This is a French colony. So they started arriving here, but it wasn't French anymore. It was Spanish. But the Spanish says, we love you guys. You're Catholic. You hate the Brits. We do too. <laughs> we got something in common. We're going to give you some land and, you know, just settle out here on, on the prairies. And, of course, down in the wetlands, down the bayous. So they, they were very welcomed by the Spanish that were here. And then eventually went back to France. And then from France back to the United States, bought them out. So that's what we, we portray at the center there, explain it all to them, either in film or in the museum. And of course the music. And Jordy here, his grandfather is very, very famous. I don't know if you ever heard of Andrew Cormier. Very famous accordion player in the uh, Golden Triangle, the Port Arthur. Orange Beaumont. You know, that's what we call Cajun Lapland. That's where Louisiana laps over into Texas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if, if it weren't for Cajuns, there'd be no Port Arthur or yeah. Beaumont. Right. Sure. So many of them left here and went there, in the, especially during the war. Uh, you know, working in the shipyards and the petrochemical plants. Trying to get away from So his life. grandfather was very, very famous, and he's moved back to Eunice now, retired. Yeah. 
<laughs> and so you now he's got his band on a Saturday. You got a free Saturday open. Yeah, yeah. yeah please come join that's us. A, that's a nice little day. You know, spend the day with us and then just move next door to the Liberty Theater at 6 o'clock from 6 to 7.30 every Saturday night. If you plan correctly, you can hit it all. Uh, right. All the good so points. Get, get there, you know, around 2 o'clock. After leaving all the other places, mm -hmm. you know how there is on Saturday around in our area, there's always music starting Something 9 o'clock in the morning yeah. all day. Yeah. And end up with us and the Liberty Theater. You go to hit Fred's and my move first. Oh, yeah. oh! <laughs> Everybody's got to go to Fred's at least <laughs> once in their life. Yeah. Not not just during Mardi Gras. No, no, no. Forget Mardi Gras. Yeah. <laughs> well, Jordan, let's go ahead and finish up our dish. You know, add some seasoning, whatever, to it, and then we're gonna go ahead and plate it up. I'll plate it up and we'll right. put that to the front. It looks good. I can't it wait to get good. a spoon. Dig into it. Some tasso. And again, if you want a copy of this recipe uh, or any other recipes done here on the show, you can go to our website at kdcg.com and <laughs> click on the What's Cooking Show. <laughs> <laughs> or you can stop by your local Piggly Wiggly stores here in Opelousa, or you can go by and meet Jason to the steamboat, and we'll be glad to uh, print up a copy off the computer for you or uh, maybe answer any questions they might have. You know, just the only thing we actually try to remember exactly who the chef is and you know what what yep. they prepared because we got so many. There's over 200 some recipes on archives now. Huh? Now it's all categorized. Steve took it a while back and and um, made sure to you know put it in different categories so it's too easy to find any kind of recipe you want there. All you gotta do is click on a category and go down the list. That's it. Very simple. There's a few dishes from you, a few dishes from me. Yeah. And pretty soon, hopefully, it'll be your award-winning dish you did for the soiree. I think Steve wants me to do that one on uh, one show. <clears throat> we'll maybe show the, how to prepare the soft-shell crab dish. That's true, because I mean, there's a certain thing that you have to go through to prepare you know, soft-shell. We always do really well, and I expected to do fairly well. I just definitely didn't expect all of that. Oh, it was wonderful. So it was blessed. I'm thankful. Yes. Thank you very much. It was wonderful. You did a great job, Jason. I'm but guys, thank you for coming. Well, thank you all so thank much. You all thank you all for inviting us. Vince. Appreciate it. And good luck to the Senate, to the majority. Okay. Thank you. And uh, keep up the good cooking. And hopefully next year we'll see you at the soiree. Yes, sir. So, congratulations thank again. Thank you very much. <laughs> and again, if you all uh, want a copy of the recipe, just go to our website or come to uh, your Piggly Wiggly stores or go by Jason at the Steamboat. Or if you want to go to Piggly Wiggly just to pick up your local groceries you That's know it. something you need locally fresh we have a lot of fresh uh people around here with fresh produce that we buy from locally yes you know try to keep it as local as possible we have mr yes. larry fano he, he brings us fresh cut okra every day come on oh yeah he's, he's a really nice guy and uh um a lot of times he'll bring us some mustard greens and stuff like that so just it's locally grown stuff it don't be cheese island but it'll it'll do you're right. <laughs> She's on my favorite part. And thank you all for watching What's Cooking Show and join us back next week when we have another celebrity guest come in or just anybody to come in. And join mm -hmm. us next week. Mm -hmm.